Now, uh, sometimes they want you to graph them, and it's the easiest graph ever because it has its own plane. You use the coordinate plane where you have x and y. This isn't that. This is the complex plane. The y-axis, what we used to call it, is in this case the imaginary axis. And the axis that's here is the real axis. So you just move the direction it tells you to. Now this one says i, or you could write i plus zero if you want to. So on the real axis it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go left or right. But on the imaginary axis it goes up one because it's positive one. So you're looking for a dot that's right there and that answer is C. Huh. C is killing it this time. So there's that. Uh, the other type, if it had said, said, for instance, let me give you one that doesn't look exactly like um, one dot. If I wanted to do three or four plus or minus three i. In that case, on the real axis, I would go over to four. And then on the uh, imaginary axis, I would go down three and our dot would be right there. That's what this looks like. Really not that complicated. Um, this is another type, it's similar. The only difference here is that you need to uh, name the point. So on my real axis, I'm over one, two, three. So my real would be three. It's positive in the imaginary, up two plus two i. So three plus two i, that. It's not opposite, it's not different, it's just this. I mean, graphing on the complex plane is very simple for just a single number. Now, when we do absolute value of the numbers, it's a little bit more complex but not really. Um, all you're going to do when you do the absolute value of anything with i in it, you want to do a squared plus b squared. And it's the square root of that number. So an a would be this number and b would be the number in front of the 7. So you'll do negative 2 squared, but I mean squaring it doesn't matter, so you can just do 2 squared plus 7 squared. 4 plus 49 and you end up with the square root of 53. Um, in this case the i goes away so you shouldn't really have an i value in there somewhere um, if it exists. I mean it shouldn't happen. This one doesn't actually even reduce into simplest radical form so we're good to go. Now in this case um, I'm just going to square a and b and take the square root um, 7 squared, and this would be negative 1 squared if you'd prefer to see it written like that. So you end up with uh, 49 plus 1, so you end up with the square root of 50. But you'll notice that there's no square root of 50 up there. That's because they want the answer in simplest radical form. This is something that's a geometry concept. It might have even been thrown at you in Algebra 1. Simplest radical form is where I look for um, the squares that live inside the numbers in a way. Any squares divisible. So the squares would be 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36. You get the idea. I'm going to take this number and divide it by these numbers to see if I can get any of them to come out e equal. And I know that 25 works because 50 divided by 25 is 2. So what that means is I can take these two numbers, the divider and the answer, and change square root of 50 into the square root of 25 times 2, or square root of 25 times the square root of 2, because it's written, this is just me writing it out in a different way. I know the square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 2, there's nothing I can do with, so I just combine them back together visually anyway. I get 5 square root of 2, so the answer to it is C. You know, not a big deal.